All right, so my name is April Wolf. I'm the Therapeutic Recreation Specialist for City of Reno. And this is our monthly hybrid virtual and in-person, we're doing it all, uh, Spinal Cord Injury Lunch and Learn, uh, which is a series of different topic-based speakers brought to you by City of Reno, Renown, the VA Center Nevada Healthcare System, and the High Fives Foundation. Um, so this month, I'm looking forward to uh, introducing Megan from VA Center Nevada Healthcare System. Um, to talk about virtual reality um, and use in pain management and kind of her role with the VA. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. We've turned on closed captions. If, so if you require that, you can uh, turn that on on your end. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you're more than welcome to type them in the chat and I'll be monitoring the chat um, or we can open it up to questions at the end. And so with that, I will turn it over to Megan. Thank you so much. Let me just do a quick introduction before I start um, my presentation. Can everybody hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up? Okay. And then the other question I wanna ask is, has anybody tried virtual reality, the head mounted display that you use? Yeah, so I see a few heads nodding there. All right, well, let me go ahead and, and get my presentation up here and We'll talk a little bit about how we're using this innovation um, at, at the VA. So can you see my slides? April? Yep, we can see them. Okay, perfect. Um, so let me just go from the beginning. All right, and then let me know if they don't advance. So like I said, my name is Megan Remsey. Um, I'm a doctorally prepared nurse that works here at the VA Reno. Um, and my job is to be a nurse innovator. I've been working here at the VA Reno for the last three years. And with the intention of using innovative solutions to solve veteran problems. Um, and, and one of uh, a big problem is pain and the disproportionate burden. And I'll speak a little bit about that and the statistics um, that we follow to kind of direct our, our efforts um, to, to relieve that pain because we know it can be a burden. I really like quotes. Um, my slide has advanced. Can you see my slide advancing? Um, yes, we can see your slide, but I can also see your notes on the next okay, slide. Okay, so let me see. You wanted to... Hide presenter view. There. Slide. Good. Um, that's not quite showing it. Can you see it? Yeah, we can see it. This has like the slideshow along the side, but that's probably Yeah, fine. so I'm trying to get it to... From the beginning, let's see here. And anyway, we'll just we'll just work with what we have. Yep. That's okay. Fine. Um. So back to the clarifying vision. So I really like quotes. I think that they give meaning and and help tell the story. I specifically like this one from Douglas MacArthur. Um. That the soldier above all prays for peace, for it is the soldier who must suffer and bear the deepest wounds and scars of war. Um, and I really take that personally here as a nurse at the VA, that our mission is all about the veteran, about serving the veteran um, and, and improving uh, and addressing what matters most to them, not what is the matter, but what matters most. And then I really believe as a nurse in person, patient-centered care. We need to do what matters for our veterans. Um, and, and it's a unique solution for veteran to veteran. So you treat a disease, you win, you lose. You treat a person, I guarantee you win no matter what the outcome. And I truly believe in that. So the objectives for my presentation today are to, um, like I've already intimated, is to, to describe that disproportionate burden and prevalence of chronic pain within the veteran community and really setting the stage for the need for innovation. Um, you know, VA and innovation sometimes don't go hand in hand, but there is a, a, a deep um, skill set of innovation throughout the VA. Um, and here in Reno, we are leading in that efforts with virtual reality and, and making sure that that is a technology that we make available to our veterans. The second objective is to define what virtual reality is and used in the healthcare setting and summarize the current use cases, and then provide some clinical examples of how we use it here at the VA and what are kind of next steps in our hopes and aspirations for the use of this technology. 
Um, as you may know, um, healthcare is, is changing and COVID has pushed us in multi different directions. But in general, the trends in healthcare are this increasing consumerism, the emerging technologies, which promise to make tech, uh, healthcare more accessible, more cost effective, and really help us improve outcomes. That's, that's the, um, the, I think the, the gold star is how can some of these interventions improve the quality of life, decrease pain, increase mood, decrease stress, all the like. Um, and again, whatever is important to the, the veteran. And then we can't do things kind of willy nilly. We really need to use evidence. We have to use our, our monies in, in very thoughtful and appropriate ways. And we need to follow the evidence to combine that with innovation. All right, so objective number one, to talk a little bit about that chronic pain issue. So chronic pain is, is a huge issue in the, in the United States and actually across the world. Um, so um, there are 126 million Americans um, with chronic pain diagnosed and it, it, it's a huge financial impact, $635 billion annually. And the cost is one thing, but it is so disabling um, when, when you experience chronic pain as, as maybe some of you do, it can be all life encompassing. It, it really impacts your ability to live your life on your own terms. And then another sobering statistic is it's the leading cause of disability under 45 years of age, really right in the prime of life, right in um, those, those years where you're raising your family and um, you, you wanna be productive and out there and enjoying life. So that's for the civilian population in general, but for prevalence with veterans, what we know is that it actually even impacts veterans more. And um, so 10% of civilians are impacted, but it's up to 30% and as high as 60% in the veteran population. So that's, that's a lot. That's a lot of people suffering um, with this uh, debilitating um, diagnosis. Then we know that there's a problem with treating chronic pain, opioids are not effective. Um, and sometimes they can do some harm. And, and we know about the opioid crisis in this country and how the pendulum has swung out to uh, make opioids very accessible and now not so accessible. But the reality is with chronic pain, which is defined as pain that lasts over six months, um, opioids are sometimes, again, not effective to address that chronic pain and can cause harm. So we want to do things that, that are effective and supportive and helpful. So, and then we also know that the VA spends about $2 billion a year. So that sets the stage for this innovation um, and the use of VR. So when I, when I started with this job three years ago, um, the idea was to use this headset, um, which had um, uh, evidence to support um, research um, to go ahead and support uh, uh, the use of pain. So we, um, I wanna just define now what VR is and how we're using it here. So here's one of our headsets here on the left. And so the VR headset is a head mounted device that goes over the, on the head and over the eyes. And it has the visual, so you can see in the auditory, you can hear the experience. And so that level of immersion creates a presence and that presence creates that pain relief or that shifting of the pers um, perspective. And again, this is a patient-centered intervention where the patient gets to choose what they, they experience. We're not forcing anybody to do anything. We have lots of different options and we want thing, people to gravitate towards what's most meaningful for them. Another idea about VR is that it's really aligned with the whole health system of care here at the VA um, and complementary and integrative health practices, which are also evidence-based. These are things such as yoga and Tai Chi, meditation, mindfulness. And there's a lot of them because again, it is whatever matters to the veteran. Um, it's whatever they gravitate towards, whatever makes sense for them. Um, there, it's not a one size fits all. It's a menu approach or a tools in your toolkit kind of approach. 
And then again, just to reiterate that um, these are evidence-based practices, which means that they've been rigor rigorously tested out in the community, so um, in, in um, trials, so that we know that they're both effective and then safe. So here at the VA, we know we've done over 400 immersions with our veterans on the inpatient experience, and we've not had one safety issue, knock on wood. Um, so we make sure that it's safe at the beginning, and then we, you know, um, make sure that our vet, we understand what the impact is to our veterans, um, collecting the outcomes on the end. So what do and what can veterans experience? So here is, um, and I don't know the size of your screen, so hopefully you can um, uh, see some of this, but um, here on the left is um, escape. And those are some gaming modalities, which are, are fun. The veterans like to do those and compete with each other. Um, and then here in the middle is, um, we have some real life experiences. So you could go to Paris or London or swim with the dolphins. And it feels incredibly immersive, incredibly immersive. And then the last one is guided meditation. So um, these are things such as mindful breathing, how to relax your body. Um, again, these are evidence-based to support um, getting into that state of mindfulness, um, letting your thoughts go, which are, are shown to help with chronic pain. So I mentioned safety, and I just want to um, touch on that a little bit more. So this is not a panacea. It doesn't work for everybody. Um, and so when we are working with our veterans, um, we will ask about these following um, items. Uh, motion sickness is the most kind of frequently um, considered a side effect, if you will. Um, and the things that we have on the headset are actually um, intended to be very relaxing, so not to trigger any motion sickness, but that is something that we definitely ask about. Um, and then vertigo, seizures, nausea and vomiting, um, and then obviously vision problems. If there's a problem with vision, then it makes it hard to um, experience the um, visual presence of the, the VR. And then the ration isolation, and those things are, are usually known to us. Just at the bottom, pacemakers and defibrillators, um, sometimes the electrical conduit of the headset will impact those things. Um, our headsets don't have those particular um, restrictions. So that is something that is, is not a problem for us. So how we're using it is um, we use it here in our CLC, our Community Living Center. We use it in our mental health unit, which is our inpatient um, mental health um, unit up on B6. And then we use it in our MSU and our infusion clinic. And then we've also used it for employees and for employee wellness at work. Um, and then in the outpatient, um, one of the most frequently asked questions is, can I take it home? Where can I get it? I like this. Um, and so we're really working towards building the business case for um, using it in the outpatient space um, and it getting veterans access to this, um, again, for pain, but also for wellness, again, that the amplification of some of those skills. All right, so objective three is to provide some clinical examples um, for the use of VR. So the first one is uh, obviously the community living center. And um, so this was the first place that we implemented and really looking on improving the pain intensity. And pain intensity means the level of pain. So here at, at the VA, we use the defense veterans pain rating scale, which is zero to 10 and has those associated uh, smiley faces and sad faces with it. So we're really looking at moving the needle from say a six to a four or a four to a two. Um, and so we're looking at, can it do that, the pain intensity, drop it down. And then, so what we did was we did a, a combination of observation and data collection. Um, and you, you might've heard that 
healthcare is more more fun as a team sport. So um, me as a nurse was working with um, our recreation therapist and, and we started with a headset called the Oculus Go. Um, and uh, we've moved on from there, but that was three years ago and the technology has, has come forward leaps and bounds. Um, so that's, that's where we started. Um, and then we, we chart on this. Uh, this is actually an intervention that we use here. And so these were some of our results that we got is that um, pre, to, pre to post, um, the pain decreased by 62%. Um, we also saw some changes with the blood pressure, um, the heart rate, oxygen saturation, and then um, you would recommend this experience. So 91% of the, the veterans said they would recommend it to other veterans. So we also do some observations when we're with the veteran. So they would smile in the headset, they fell asleep, their breathing became slow, deep and regular, and some of them fell asleep. So um, it, was, it was very entertaining um, and, and encouraging to watch that experience. And these are some of the, the comments that they would make while they're in the headset. Um, so fun to see that this is the only thing that relieves my pain. Incredible. I love riding in the helicopter. And then colorful language, hell of a ride. So here are some of the um, headsets that we currently use and our, our sit up with the, um, uh, how we move it through the facility. Um, so the second experience is um, in our mental health unit. Um, and so this sometimes is, is, a, is a difficult impact um, for this, these veterans. They're often in crisis and they've suffered significant losses. Um, so how it works is that again, the headset can bring the veteran into an instant state of mindfulness and presence. Um, the other thing we love about the headset that we're using currently is it has a gaze mode in it. So there is no hand controller and um, that the controller is inside the headset. So the mouse can be used with a nod of the head and to make a selection. And then it's, we use it in a group setting in the mental health unit. And so it's safe and effective for use in the group setting. And it's also non-invasive. So that is very important um, as well because non-invasive means no side effect. Um, so the design in our mental health unit again is to use it in a group setting, which was a novel approach um, and, and the veterans really like it. And they can hear what's going on with the other veteran experiences. And oftentimes, and in fact, I was working with them yesterday and um, one veteran heard some music in the other experience and said, hey, what's going on over there? I wanna do that. And so I, I said, oh, well that's, they're in Vienna. They're doing a little waltzing. And so uh, I was able to direct on him to, choose that immersion and he, he really enjoyed it. Um, so I, I love that community sense, that empathetic response as well. And again, this is a multidisciplinary intervention. So it means that nursing and recreation therapy, again, working together to really support our veterans and bring them technology that improves the quality of their life. So some of our outcomes in the uh, mental health unit is that over 80% of our veterans report a mood pre to post immersion. Um, and then we've done it over, um, now it's over 300 times. Um, and this is also something that has been selected for our diffusion of excellence marketplace project. And um, so that means that that's available um, to be able to um, um, be looked at um, and shared within the VA and also outside the VA. And here again, some of those quotes, which I really love to share with this group um, because I couldn't make these things up. They're just so creative and, and, and clever. And, 
Uh, so the third one down, this veteran was in a beach immersion and she said it felt like her feet were getting wet and I just really loved that. Or the fifth one down, it feels like sunshine on my face. And then again, that colorful language um, from some of our veterans um, and, you know, uh, talk, talking about um, comparison with um, other kinds of medications, but, but they really liked the experience. So the third example that I want to share with you um, has come about as some of our technology has advanced. I mentioned we started with our Oculus Go and now we are using, um, uh, this is a Pico Neo 2 headset that has the ability to have a dashboard. So the clinician in the inpatient setting could see what's going on in the outpatient setting. And I had alluded to the fact that um, the veterans ask for it when they go home. And so we're trying to really understand how the, the headset could be deployed for those veterans that we believe there could be benefit for. So we, we did um, a feasibility study. We ended, it was last year, we did it during COVID. And this was a collaboration between our physical medicine and rehabilitation department. It was funded by our whole health department. And so we had um, 10 headsets, 10 veterans, and we asked them to use the headset at home for 15 minutes, um, they were FDA approved modules. And then we would ask them to do a pain diary and a mood score. And so what we were able to find is that there was an average decrease in pain um, in those veterans that were participating. Um, and they also said that it helped their stress, their mood, and they were very satisfied with it. Um, and that there were no side effects, which we really wanted to emphasize that safety component, um, again, of the use of the headset. And then um, those quotes, again, that I, I just love, um, and, and so the second one, I never thought I would have relief for the pain. And then um, tracking the mood and pain together, um, one veteran remarked that when the pain goes down, my mood goes up and I'd never thought about that before. Um, and that writing it down helped um, using that pain diary. So uh, it, was, it was very helpful for us to understand that this was something that um, the veterans found very useful, very effective, and that they liked it. Um, and then just some more quotes um, to end the presentation um, that their mood was improved and they were less worried and more relaxed. Um, and then the third one down, my daughter watched me in the headset and noticed how relaxed I became during the immersion. Um, I, I like that when family members are able to see some of the benefit and um, so, and then the last one is a great place to stop, which is that the physical therapist thought that this veteran had fallen asleep, but he was just relaxed and using his deep breathing that he had learned in the headset. So um, that is the conclusion of my, my presentation, and I would love to open it up for any, any questions, if you might have them, or any clarifications. Great. So um, does anybody that is either in the room or online have any questions for Megan? What sort of software are you using with your, because um, you know, I have an Oculus Quest that I use. And I just kind of use different YouTube videos and mindfulness activities. Is it a downloadable program that you're using, or do you have to purchase that set with the software? I think I heard the question. It got better at the end, but I think it was about what software that we're using. And, yes, correct, and, Megan. Yeah. So what I would say is that um, when we're using it here in the inpatient um, setting. What we've tried to do is come up with headsets that have everything downloaded already. So the current headset that we use has all the immersions already loaded. Um, the guest Wi-Fi at, at VA sometimes is not very reliable. And um, the buffering that can occur when we're trying to stream something can really impact the ability to um, have a deep immersion. So I know in the outpatient space, um, some of our veterans have bought like the Oculus Quest and, and 
um, headsets like that. And that those meditations um, that you can download and put on that headset would be similar to similar to what we're using. Um, this is really um, something that has transcended just the veteran population, but it's ubiquitous out there in the community. So I don't have any specific recommendations on um, apps per se, um, but I think there are a lot of great, um, great content out there. At three years ago, there was not. There was just not. Um, I... Uh, so, but it's really moving far and fast and that evidence is driving this. So um, that's what I would say about that. Megan, for folks that are not a veteran or maybe not able to access this in uh, inpatient setting, is it, do you know of any other locations in town that are offering this as an option? Not yet, but I, I do foresee that this will be something we have had um, questions because we've been able to do so many immersions. Um, there have been other organizations that have asked for support and, and um, understanding of what we're doing, how we're doing it, and the safety implications. So I would say that um, this, this will probably within the next two to three years, be available in the community as like freestanding um, or our physicians will adopt this um, because it is so impactful. It does not work for everybody. It's not a panacea, but I think it works for a wide range of the population in lots of different cases. And again, um, the how it works is it's really meditation on training wheels. It um, you don't have to meditate to get the benefit, just being immersed in a pleasurable situation. Um, and it, it really can help amplify your ability to calm your nervous system um, and, and bring in um, some, uh, what I call flow states, joy states. Any other questions either in the room or online for Megan? No. Megan, thank you so much for taking the time to present on this topic, and uh, we will look forward to seeing everyone next month. Thank you so much for, for having me. It's been a privilege. Take very good care. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.